Good evening. Welcome once again to the Mathematics Festival. This is the last edition of the Mathematics Festival. I am Eric Kwekuyebwa. I'm also known as Procedia. A tutor of Anglican Senior High School Kumasi Kupakas. I'm your facilitator for today. Today we are going to talk about bearings. So please take your books, your pens, and calculator and follow me. And let's enter the classroom. Bearings. Learning objective. What should we achieve today? Today, by the end of the lesson, the student will be able to solve distance bearing problems using the vector approach. I'll be doing small of the diagrams, but most of my calculations will be the vector approach because of our mathematics session where the student cannot draw the diagram and present to me. So that is why I'm going for the vector approach. So that my mathletes, when we reach the mathematics session, can give me calculations and we discuss. Relevant previous knowledge. What is the relevant previous knowledge for today's lesson? If you want to understand bearings to the fullest, there are certain topics that should be at your fingertips. The first one, alternate angles, trigonometry, and vectors. Very good. We have to know all these things before bearings will be well understood. Bearings. When we say bearing, what is a bearing at all? A bearing is a measurement, measurement of an angle used to show directions. Used to show what? Directions. A measurement of an angle used to show directions why am i laying more emphasis on this because we we know that there is an angle that we measure as what as where two lines meet an angle is formed when two lines meet so i can have an angle I can have an angle as this one. This is an angle. Two lines are meeting to form the angle. So this is called an angle. This angle is two lines meeting. This angle will not be used to show directions. If the angle is not used to show direction, then it is not a bearing. So you have to distinguish between an angle which is the measurement of just two lines meeting and an angle that will be used to show directions. So I'm talking of an angle that is used to show directions and that is what we call what? Bearings. But not this angle you see here. Okay. Types of bearings. Types of bearings. Basically, we are going to consider two types of bearings. The first one, we call it the true bearing. The true bearing. The second one is compass bearing. True bearing 
and compass bearing. So you are going to take them one after the other. The first one is the true bearing. When we say true bearing, what does it mean? A true bearing is a three-digit angle used to show directions. A three-digit angle used to show directions. So if the angle is not three digits, we put zero in front to make it a three digit angle. Examples are, I have zero six five. Actually, zero six five should have been 65 degrees. But because through bearing, is what a three digit angle that will be used to show direction i've put zero in front zero six five make sure it's three digit angle another one 140 degrees we have 140 degrees which is a measurement of an angle just inside the book but this 140 degrees i'm talking about an angle that will be used to show direction 086. Now I think you know why I put zero in front. It should have been 86. But the zero in front is making it become a, a three digit angle that will be used to show direction. And my last example is 301. 301. Very good. Let's see how true bearings are read. How true bearings are read. How to read true bearings. How to read true bearings. We are going to learn how true bearings are read. One. True bearings are read from the geographical north. Not just any north. I'm laying emphasis on the word war, geographical, because we even have the north side of a magnetic pole, this time geographical north, of a starting point in the clockwise direction, clockwise direction, not anti-clockwise, clockwise direction, until you reach the vector or line Joining the starting and ending point. All the angles on the way. That is the second important point when you are reading through bearings. All the angles on the way will be added. All the angles on the way will be added. To get the true bearing. So let's look at an illustration. But before the illustration, if you want to find or if you want to calculate or read a true bearing, you have to first identify the starting point. What is the starting point? Where are you starting from? we can easily identify the starting point after the word f-r-o-m from from where from a then it means i'm starting the reading from the geographical north of a in the clockwise direction in the clockwise direction Let's look at an example. The bearing of X, but from Y, is 210 degrees. Look at this illustration. The bearing 
of x but from where from y is 210 degrees then this 210 degrees is giving us a direction why this direction because if i want to move from kumasi to accra i can go by bus if i want to move from ghana to united states of america i cannot go by bus i'll go by either the sea or the air but ask yourself is there any road in the air is there any road on the sea this is why we have to learn bearings today the captain in the ship the pilot in the airplane is using what we call the compass and the compass is the instrument that is used to show direction so because of that we have what we also called the compass bearing not a compass in not a compass in the mathematical set we have compass in the mathematical set which is an instrument used to draw circles and acts no that is not a compass i'm talking about i'm talking about what a compass which is an instrument used to show directions that has four cardinal points the north south east and west the surveyors use them the captains use them the pilots use them so the compass give them a direction so that they can move in the air and go to their respective de destinations also on the sea there is no road on the sea you cannot walk on the sea you even sink there's no route there so how will you know that if i pass here i'll go to morocco how will you know if i pass here i'll go to spain the geographers have done all these things with respect to our starting point in ghana with particular giving bearings you can go to your respective destination so this bearing on your screen 210 is used to show direction and because of that bearings are also known as directions 210 i want to measure this bearing but from where from why here we don't follow alphabetical order don't say alphabetically s come before y so you are starting from x no if the question is not starting from x you can start from x this is from y so from y this is what you do you draw you draw this this cross means the cardinal point of the point y the cardinal points north south east and west north south east and west of what point of the point y so the point y is what i've drawn first because of the word from y from y that shows your starting point okay now move in the clockwise direction that is how bearings are read from the geographical north in the clockwise direction clockwise direction i've covered an angle 90 now the angle i've covered here is 90. it has not reached the 210 so plus another 90 which is a quadrantal angle plus another 90 giving me 180 this is a sketch we don't use protractor to do bearings it's a sketch so 180 plus how much will give me the 210 because if i add another 90 it will go beyond 210 it will become 270 so i have to pause here and add a particular acute angle that will give me 210 so i'll add 30 to it and the moment i add the 30 
it will show a direction. So that is the direction. That is the direction. So the direction is 90, 90 plus 90 plus 30, and that gave me 210 to be going this way. So this place is 30. Just write 30 there, don't measure. Where is it going? The bearing of X from Y. So if it is from Y, it will come to X. So I will draw north, south, east, and west here. And here will be the location of X. That is an illustration of how to draw two bearings. How to draw two bearings. Okay. Another illustration. Another illustration of how to draw true bearings. The bearing of P but from Q is 330 degrees. We want to see how we can illustrate this bearing diagrammatically. The bearing of P from Q is 330 degrees. So, this 330 degrees is our direction. Bearings are also called directions because they are angles that are used to show directions. So, where should I start from? Where should I start from? After the word from, what alphabet, what point came from where? The bearing of P from Q. So if it is from Q, then I will start from Q. When I start from Q, you don't just draw a dot, but you draw a cross. And that cross sign means the cardinal points of the compass, north, south, east, and west. North, South, East, and West. And this is the location of the point Q. So how do you draw your bearing? Let's read the bearing. Bearings are read from the geographical north in the clockwise direction. So let's do that. From the geographical north of the starting point. And the starting point here is Q. So from the geographical north, clockwise direction, let's move clockwise direction, meaning in the direction of the clock, how the clock moves. So this is the north. I'm starting from the north with the red ink you can see on your screen. So I have this 90 plus another 90. This time the bearing is very big. Plus another 90, 270. Which means the bearing is 330, so I have to still continue. But now I need an acute angle, an angle less than 90 degrees. That should be added to the 270, so that I'll get 330. Now I have 270. But I need 330. So what must be added to 270 to give me 330? I have to add 60 to make it 330. So that 60 should come here. And the moment the 60 comes here, where you write the acute angle, a direction will be shown. A direction will be shown. And where is it going? If it's from K, then it is of P. So it will be going to P. It will be going to P. So this will be P. Now, I've shown you how to read bearings. Let's use this to treat the topic that we call back bearing or reverse bearing. Back bearing or reverse bearing. Now that we know how bearings are read, back bearing or reverse bearing. What do you mean by back bearing? Yes, it's the same as reverse bearing. 
But what do you mean by backbearing? When we say backbearing, it means you are interchanging the starting and the ending points. Somebody will move from Kumasi to Accra. Your starting point is Kumasi to Accra. Actually, I don't know the distance between Kumasi and Accra, but let me assume, assuming that it is 5,000 kilometers. Then if you move from Kumasi to Accra and it is 5,000 kilometers, then when you move from Accra to Kumasi, because it is the same distance, the answer is still 5,000 kilometers when you change the starting point. Kumasi to Accra, 5,000. So Accra to Kumasi is also 5,000. The same distance, but bearings are not the same. Their bearings are different. So if I say the bearing is from Kumasi, and I give that bearing to you, now, if I reverse it, that's why we call it reverse bearing. Let's go back. That's why we call it back bearing. So if I reverse it, and now the bearing is no more from Kumasi, and it is from Accra, then we call it back bearing. Bearings will change, but distances are the same. Why is it that bearings are changing? It will change because from Kumasi will be from the north of Kumasi in the clockwise direction. But from Accra will also be from the geographical north of Accra in the clockwise direction. So there will be differences. And now let's see. This is what I've explained. When the starting and ending points of a, of a movement are interchanged in bearings, we call it back bearing or reverse bearing. A given true bearing and its back bearing or reverse bearing are not equal. Yes, the bearings are not equal. But the distances between the starting and ending points are equal. And that is what I, I explained. Let's take a question. First question for back bearing or reverse bearing. If the bearing of a point A from a point B is 156, find the bearing of B from A. Let's analyze something here. What is the reverse bearing here? What is the back bearing here? Initially, the question was A from a point B. So if you reverse it, let the starting become the ending. And let the ending become the starting. And you reverse it, it will now be B from A. And that's what we mean by reverse or back bearing. Okay, so how will you solve such a problem? Before you solve such a problem, you have to first draw a diagram. So I'm going to draw the diagram. The first statement will be used to draw a diagram. Then, you use the diagram to solve the second statement, which is rather the question. Okay, let's use the first statement to draw. So if I use the first statement and I, and I draw, after the drawing, I will not make use of the first statement. If the bearing of a point A from a point B, from what point? From a point B, meaning I have to start from B. So you draw your cross, your north, south, east, and west, the cardinal points of the compass. I will draw it here. And this is my point B. This is the north of the point B. 
Then I start reading the bearing 156. 156 from the north in the clockwise direction. What angle is here? The angle here is 90. The angle there is 90. If I add another 90, it will become 180. Then it has gone beyond the given bearing, which is 156. So if you add another 90 and it goes beyond the given bearing, then it tells you you have to stand there and add an acute angle. So I have 90. 90 plus what angle will give me 156? 90 plus 66 will give me 156. And so, you can also obtain it by 156 by 90, so that you get the angle that will be added to the 90. So I have to add 66 here. Just write 66. So if you write 66, it tells you that the direction is in this quadrant. So the direction is going. Going to where? If it is from the point B, then it is of the point A. So it's going to A. So this is A, the cardinal points of the point A. Let's check something. The whole angle here is 90. So if here is 66, if this place is 66, what will be the angle here? We will subtract 66 from 90. And what will be the answer there? Obviously, it will be 24. So you do simple subtraction and the angle there is 24. Then you check alternate angles. Angles are the corners of a, any Z-like shape. I call it Z-angles. So, you check your alternate angles. At the beginning, I told you the relevant previous knowledge that we have here is one of them is alternate angles. So, if here is 24, the angle here is also 24. 64, 66 on top. 24 down. But here it will alternate. It will rather be 24 on top, 66 down. That is what you mean by alternate. Here is 66 on top, 24 down. But here it will be 24 on top, 66 down. Alternate angles from plane geometry one. That is if two parallel lines crossed by a transversal. The angles at the corners of any Z-like shape of that nature are equal. We call it alternate angles. Okay, I've drawn the diagram. I've checked all my alternate angles. Now, find the bearing of B from A. How will you find the bearing of B from A? So the first statement is cancelled. I will not go there again. Now, I'm using the diagram to find the bearing of B from A. So, the bearing of B from A, the bearing of B, but from A, this time, I'm going to use the diagram to read the bearing of B from A. I will start from the north of A and I move in the clockwise direction until I reach the line joining A and B, the starting and the ending point. All the angles on the way will be added. All the angles on the way will be added. Let's go back to that diagram and read the bearing of B from A. From A. So from the north of A, in the clockwise direction, what angle is there? 90 plus another 90 plus another 90, making 200 and what? 70. 
plus 66 before I reach the line joining A and B. All the angles on the way will be added. Now I'm starting the reading from the north of A. But not the north of B. The north of B was used to draw the diagram. So after drawing the diagram, you forget about the first sentence. Then you use the diagram to solve the question. The question is the bearing of B from A. So from the north of A, let's check. From the north of A, in the clockwise direction, there is an angle here 90 degrees. There is an angle here 90 degrees. There is an angle here 90 degrees. You move and move and move until you meet the line joining A and B, the starting and the ending. Have you seen that? Okay, let's add all the angles on the way. All the angles on the way are 90, 90, 90, and 66. Okay. 90, 90, and 66. Let's go to the next page. Yes. We saw that it was 90 plus another 90 plus another 90 plus 66 degrees before I reach the line joining A and B. Before I reach the line joining A and B. And when you do this, we have 90 plus 90 plus 90, which is 270 plus 66. And that will give me 336. So the final answer is 336. The final answer is 336. That is back bearing. So have you seen that? The reverse bearing was not the same as the bearing that was given to us. It wasn't the same. But the distance between A and B are the same. Whether you move from A to B or you move from B to A, I've explained this. Okay. Let's look at the second back bearing question. The second back bearing question. The bearing of K from L. The bearing of K, but from where? From L is 330 degrees. Find the bearing of L from K. So we have interchange K and L, so this is back bearing. Let me concentrate on the first sentence. What is the first sentence? The bearing of K from L is 330. The bearing of K from L is 330. From where? From L. From L, it means L should be my starting point in the measurement. So I'll first draw my cardinal points. I have told you this cross stands for what? North, south, east, and west, which, which, which is the world? The cardinal points of the compass. And this point is L, because the question is saying from L. So from L, let's read 330 degrees. True bearings are read from the geographical north of the starting point, And the starting point is L. So I'm going to read 330 degrees. Let's check. This is the north of L. In what direction? Clockwise direction. The angle covered is 90. Plus another 90, 180. Plus another 90, 270. But still, we have not reached the given bearing, which is 330. This means... I have to add an acute angle so that I'll get 330. Where have I reached now? I have 270. Then, what must be added to 270 so that you get 330? It is 60, obviously. So, add 60 to this. So, the moment you add 60, you are writing the 60 there. You are not using protractor. The moment you write the 60 there, it tells you where the direction should go. So here, yeah, my direction should go this way. That is where it will be going. So have you seen that an angle is showing a direction? And that angle is bearing. 
is buried. So at times you wonder, you be at the airport and you say, this airplane, uh, it was supposed to go to the left. Oh, that was the nearness, the proximity. And it was going around like that. No, the, the compass is, is working. The compass moves in the clockwise direction. So even if it is closer to where the aeroplane must pass, the compass doesn't work in the anti-clockwise direction. It moves in the clockwise direction. For true bearings, for true bearings. So, this is K, because the initial one was L, right? And it is of K, so here will be K. Check your alternate angles. Angles are the corners of the Z-like shape, where these are parallel lines. These are parallel lines. These lines are parallel. These lines are parallel, and this line is a transversal. So, angles are the corners of the Z-like shape. They are equal. They are alternate angles. But let me check this. If here is here will be what? Here will be 30. So that the total angle here will be 90. The total angle here will be 90. So here will be 30. 60 plus 30 will give me 90. So if you look at the angles forming at the point L, 30 is on top, but 60 is down. So when you come here, it will rather be 60 on top, 30 down. And that is what we mean by alternate. It will turn, alternate. Here, 30 on top, 60 down. But when you come here, to be 60 on top, 30 down. And that is alternate angles. Now that I've checked my alternate angles, the first statement, I will not consider it again. What is the function of the first statement? The bearing of K from L is 330 degrees. The function of that statement is to be used to draw the diagram. So after using the first statement to draw the diagram, don't go to the first statement again. Now let's look at the second statement. Every statement has a duty to perform. What is the duty of the first statement? To draw the diagram. What is the duty of the second statement? Which is rather the question. You use the diagram to answer the question. Now let's use the diagram to answer the question. What is the question? Find the bearing of L from K. Find the bearing of L from where? From K. So, find the bearing of L from K. This was the diagram. Let me draw the diagram again. It was from L. 90 plus 90 plus 90, 270. 270 plus 60. Giving me 330. So the direction went this way. And this is the point K. So check your alternate angles. Here is 60, here is 30. So what do you see here? I have 30, 60, and here will be 60, 30. It will alternate. Here, 30 on top, 60 down. But here will be 60 on top, 30 down. Alternate angles. Find the first statement has performed its duty. Find the bearing of L but from K. So now we are going to read from the north of K, not from the north of L. From the north of L was the question that we were using to draw the diagram. But now that I'm going to answer, it is from the north of K because the bearing of K from L. From the north of K. North of K move in the clockwise direction. If I move in the clockwise direction, 
you go and go and go until you meet the line joining L and K, then you stop. Until you meet the line joining L and K, you stop. When you stop, you add all the angles on the way from the north of K. The angle here is already 90. You have only two angles on that way. It is 90 and 60. And all the angles on the way will be added. So 90 plus 60 from the north of K to L, 90 plus 60 will be the bearing. So let's go to the next page. I'm going to write 90 plus 60. Next page. 90 plus 60. 90 plus 60. And the answer is what? 150. And that is the bearing of what? The bearing of L but from K. Yes, that is back bearing. Okay. Very good. This back bearing normally comes in objectives. So in objectives, we have a technique that we use to solve back bearings. A technique that we use to solve back bearings. This is the theoretical way. I've taught you the theoretical way of finding back bearings. Let's look at the objective way. Why? In objectives, no method is required. You are not supposed to show any procedure. There's no need. What you need is to get your answer. So if you have the shortest possible way to get the answer in objectives, but don't do this in theory. Don't do it in theory. Objective techniques for back bearing. So after teaching you the objective techniques, we will apply it to the back bearings we have solved so far. Eh? The back bearings we have solved so far. We apply it to that and you see that it is working like magic. Objective techniques for back bearing or reverse bearing. When giving bearing theta, I am representing the giving bearing as theta. The giving bearing as what? As theta. When the giving bearing is less than 180, now our mark is 180. So just check something. If you ask somebody to go and fetch water for you and you inform the person that go and fetch water up to this level of the bucket. I'm giving you a practical example. Up to this level of the bucket. And the person went. He fetched the water. The person brought it and you saw that it has gone beyond the level. What do you do? You pour some of the water away. And the practical example is that here you subtract. If it goes beyond the level, you pour some of the water away. If it goes below the level, you then instruct that person to go and add more. So if it's below, you add more. If it is above the level, you subtract. And how do you subtract water? You pour it away so that you get the level you want. Do you get me? So, this scenario I've created, how can we apply it to our techniques in back bearing? Back bearing, our level of water is 180 degrees. That is our level. So if I give you a bearing and the bearing is less than 180, add 180. If it goes beyond 180, it has gone beyond the level. So what do you do? You pour water away, that is subtraction. So you subtract 180. So what about if it is also exactly equal to 180, you still subtract 180. So let's check something. 
when giving bearing theta is less than 180 degrees, the back bearing or reverse bearing is the giving bearing theta plus 180. Why are you adding 180? Because it's less than 180 and 180 is our level. If it is less, you add. If it's more than 180, you subtract. If it is equal to 182, you subtract. You get 0, 0, 0. Because bearing is a three digit angle. So you will not write a single zero. You write zero, zero, zero. And later we will come to realize that that bearing means due north. You are moving in the north direction. When giving bearing theta is greater than or equal to, here I have two cases, either is greater than or equal to 180, you subtract 180 because it's greater than you subtract. So the given bearing is theta, my back bearing will be theta minus 180. Please, let's go back and apply this objective technique to the two back bearings we solved. Let's go back and apply to it. Okay, this was the second one. The first one, the first back bearing, The first back bearing, this was the answer. This is rather the second one. But I want the question. Uh -huh. This is the question. This is the question. If the bearing of a point A from a point B is 156, now the given bearing is 156. So ask yourself, because the given bearing is 156, you check, is 156 our level? What is our level in back bearing? Our level is 180. Is it less than 180 or it is greater than 180? The 156 is less than 180. If it's less than 180, the objective technique is telling you that 180 without drawing the diagram you are there quick so i will say the back bearing which is bearing of b from a will be equal to the given bearing 156 is less than 180 it couldn't reach our level so i'll add 180 and what is 156 plus 180 you get 336 and that was the answer we got previously let's apply the technique to the second question yes let's apply our technique to the second question what what is the giving bearing the giving bearing is 330 degrees so you ask yourself 330 is it less than 180 or the given bearing 330 is greater than 180 is greater than 180 330 is greater than 180 if it goes beyond the level you subtract and that is what i created a scenario that if a level is given to you to fresh water and it goes beyond the level what do you do you pour some of the water away to come back to the level that is subtraction you can't pour water away and say it is addition. Okay. So, the back bearing, which is bearing of L from K, will be equal to the given bearing, because it goes beyond our level, I will subtract 180, which is our level. And when I subtract 180, I'll get 150. And if you check the answer we got, yes, this was the answer we got, 150. And using the technique, you also got 150. And it is true. So let's use this idea to solve some past objective questions. Past questions that are objectives. And we apply the technique. The technique is a very good technique for objective.
Yes. First objective. SSC. July 2002. Objective question 34. You can go and refer. SSC July 2002. Objective question 34. The bearing of gene from H is 087. What is the bearing of H from gene? Back bearing. What is the giving bearing? The giving bearing is 087. 087. Okay, let's ask ourselves. 087. Is it less than our level? Is it less than the 180? Or it is greater than 180? Obviously, 087 is 87. The zero came because true bearing is a three-digit angle. So we add 180. If the level is less than 180, the giving bearing is less than 180, you add 180. So this is objective question, and I can decide not to draw any diagram. So what do you say? I will say the bearing... of H from G without drawing any diagram is the giving bearing which is 0, 8, 7 is less than 180 so I'll add 180 and when I add 180 87 plus 180 what are we going to get 200 and what 67 267 267. The correct answer is C. There was a typo there. 267. Is the back bearing? Next question. Yes. This question is vectors, but it is also application of back bearing. It's vectors, but it's also application of back bearing why is the application of back bearing if you look at the first vector that is given it is vector a b the arrow is moving from a to where to b meaning the bearing is from a so if they now turn it and say find vector b a the direction has been changed now the starting is becoming the ending and the ending is becoming the what the starting and this is a typical characteristic of a reverse or back bearing vector a b vector a b vector a b what is the starting point let me explain this statement vector a b five kilometers comma 300 degrees what does this mean it means the five kilometers is the distance. A vector can be written in terms of the distance and the bearing. The five kilometers is the distance. The 300 degrees is the bearing. But I've told you, in back bearings, the distances are always the same. So when I change it, and I write vector B, A. If you look at this, the direction is from A going to be so if the direction is from a going to be vector a b where is the arrow coming from the arrow is coming from a so it means a is our initial point or the starting point of the vector and b is the terminal point or the ending point of the vector and so the bearing 300 is from a but if i say now find vector b a it means now the bearing is from b so it is still back bearing. Application of back bearing, but it is vectors. Be very careful here. So vector B A, I'm expecting the distance to be the same. The distance will be the same five kilometers, it will not change. If you remember from the beginning, I said if you move from Kumasi to Accra and the distance is 5,000, then from Accra to Kumasi to the same distance, it will be 5,000. So vector A, B, vector B, A having the same magnitude or distance. But the direction has been changed. So apply back bearing. Apply back bearing. 
Now my giving bearing is 300. My giving bearing is 300. What will be the back bearing? Because the 300 is more than 180, the back bearing, it has gone beyond our level. <laughs> the level I was talking about. It has gone beyond our level, and so I will subtract 180. The back bearing will be 300 minus 180. So vector BA is equal to 5 kilometers. What is 300 minus 180? 120. Simple. What is the correct option? The correct option here is what? Is D. I've applied the technique. And it works like magic. As you can see. Okay. Next thing. We're talking about compass bearing. Compass bearing. Compass bearing. Compass bearings. Before we do the compass bearings, let's go for a break. And when we come back, I will introduce you to compass bearings. <laughs> 